Some people may ask, Kevin, I want to stop sinning, but for some reason, I can't stop sinning. What is going on, Kevin? Let me speak about something that I speak about every so often. You need to go on a spiritual fast. No eating or drinking for a certain time period. Some people may say, well, Kevin, I heard that if you don't drink anything for a while or whatever, you may die. What? My niece, my aunt, my mom have gone on a fast for seven days, a week, plus more. And there are some other people who have gone on a fast without eating or drinking anything and they lived after their fast. But here you are making excuses. Myself, I was two, hmm, two or three hours from seven days on a fast without eating or drinking anything. If I can do it, if my mom, aunt, niece, and other people can do it, you can do it as well. Your problem is you are not willing to sacrifice. That is your problem. Go on a fast. No eating or drinking anything. And while you are fasting, read your Bible and pray. Some people may say, well, I am really skinny right now, Kevin, and I don't want to lose more weight. So if I fast for three days or so, I am going to get more skinny. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? You want to be delivered from your sins. You want to serve God much more properly. But you are saying that you are worried about losing weight. Get out of here, <laughs> my Lord. Some people may say, well, Kevin, I am taking medications right now. And if I don't eat or drink anything, I may die. You see, you are still making excuses. When are you going to stop making excuses and trust in God? Use your faith. You think too much. Stop thinking and act more. Stop thinking and act more. When you know something is right, act. I know that may be easier said than done, but this is the way that we have to become. You want to serve God better, but you find every excuse to not do it. My Lord, let me tell you this story. Back around 2006 or 2007, I learned that I had asthma. And asthma was really, really bad. The doctor told me that my lungs were at 79 or 77 percent. I had to carry around my inhaler 
everywhere I went. My asthma was so bad that I could not sin as much as I wanted to. So I could not do as much bad things <laughs> as I wanted to back then, which was a huge problem for myself. <laughs> that may have been the plan of God there. So around 2009 or 2010, I was prescribed this other medication for asthma and it is called Symbicort, S-Y-M-B-I-C-O-R-T, I believe. Now with that, I had to take that twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. The crazy thing about that, the more medications I would take for asthma, the more my lungs felt like it was getting worse. Crazy. So, I would even have to go to the emergency room around that time period about three to six times a year or more. Because even with taking my inhalers, there were times where I still would not be able to breathe. It was horrible extremely horrible. It is a miracle that I am here today. The crazy thing about that too, I was much more in shape back then. I would jog so much. I would work out at the gym, lift weights. I was like <laughs> big muscles and everything. Man, waste of time. But I was so sick. So, something happened where I wanted to change my life. And I was asking God to heal me. And it seemed like God did not want to heal me. And... I was so confused and I was kind of hurt as well, I believe, but I was irritated as well. So I started to learn more and more about God. And I started to learn more about faith. And so many people don't use or don't understand the principles of faith. I am not saying that I know as much about faith. Hmm. I am not saying that I knew as much about faith as I do now, but I was learning principles of faith back then. So while I was taking my asthma medications. I was believing that I am healed. But still, I could not really breathe. So a thought came to my mind one day and it was pretty much saying, if you are truly healed, why are you taking your asthma medications for if you are healed? 
And I was thinking, if I don't take my medications, something bad is going to happen. Like, I am not going to be able to breathe right. So I said to myself, hey, let me stop taking my asthma medications. My Lord, the first day was horrible. Second day, and I believe that whole week was bad. And I was so pressured to begin taking my asthma medications back again. As time went by, I would get fewer and fewer asthma attacks. And I started to notice too, I did not have to go to the hospital, hospital as well. Then one year passed by two years, three years, I believe four years as well, no asthma medications and no trips to the hospital for asthma. Please listen to what I am going to say now. During that time, Every so often, I would get an asthma attack. Listen, please, 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 please listen. Your faith is going to be tested. Even when you get healed, demons may give you symptoms of your illness or your injury to try to make you believe that you are not healed. This happened so many times to me, but I continued to say, I am healed, I am healed, I am healed. Even when the symptoms of asthma attacks were coming back to me, I continued to say, I am healed and I am not going to the hospital. I am not going to take any asthma medications because I am healed. There were times where I had to stay home because I could not really breathe. Like to walk would make me get out of breath. Laying down, I was out of breath. So I could not go anywhere. But I continued to say that I am healed despite the way that I was feeling. And you may say, well, if you were having asthma attacks, that means that you have asthma. Listen, my Lord, stop thinking about supernatural things in our earthly way. Because if you continue to do that, you are not going to understand the things of God. You are never going to be healed if you don't understand faith. Faith is not about how you feel or what is going on with you at that point of time. Faith is trusting in God that he has healed you. He has answered your prayers. And everything is fine despite how you are feeling. Even if everything on you is telling you that you are sick, you are in fear, you are angry, you are this and that. Faith is saying, no, it is not happening despite of it happening to you right now. You may say that you are delusional. Oh, my Lord. 
people say that they want to be healed. People say that they believe that there is a God. But you are not willing to transition your way of thinking to receive what you want in God. So frustrating. Everything you see on earth, before it got here, it had to happen in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm, in order for it to get here. Everything that happens on this earth first have to happen in the spiritual realm. All this chaos that you see now, it had to happen first in the spiritual realm. So what you are seeing now is the effects of the spiritual realm. My Lord. So as time, let me get back to my story. As time went on, I stopped taking my asthma medication. I stopped going to the hospital for asthma and it went away. Yes, demons tried to make me think that I still have asthma and give me breathing problems and stuff like that, but I continue to declare that I am healed, I am healed, I am healed, demons leave now. Because if you are healed and you begin to feel those symptoms again, that means that is a demon messing with you, trying to get you to come against your healing with saying foolish things. Well, I guess I am not healed now or I guess I am sick again. When you say that, my Lord, death in life is in the power of the tongue so when you say stupid things like that you are allowing that demon to bring back that illness or that injury you can condemn yourself with the words that you speak this is why i tell people be careful of what you say be careful of the people that you come around because they can throw down your faith and make you as weak as they are. And I am not saying that I am the strongest person in God and stuff like that because I am not. But I know how serious your words are. I am not going to help demons curse me with saying negative things about myself, saying that I have asthma still and all that dumb stuff there. No, the only reason my asthma is gone is because God healed me. And even if demons come back to me trying to bring that asthma stuff to me, it is not going to happen because I am going to speak against it every single time when a demon tries to make my breathing go bad. No, I don't have asthma anymore. I am healed. Despite the way that I am feeling, it doesn't matter the way that I am feeling. I know I am healed. Principles of faith. My Lord. principles of faith. If you can't get faith right, you are going to stay as a weak Christian if you can stay as a Christian with having so weak a faith. When, when you serve God, you want to increase in God, not stay on that puny, tiny level that you are on now. And I am not saying this out of pride or anything like that because the devil want you to stay low. Demons want you to be lukewarm. If you can't understand faith, chances are you are lukewarm now. Because how can you operate in God with wavering faith? 
How can you? Well, if things don't go my way, I am going back to sin. How can you waver in faith and stay as a servant of God? How can you? Faith is not about what you see. Faith is not about how you feel. Faith is about blindly trusting in God that he has done what you have asked. I am following God's rules and regulations, so that curse of asthma should not be on me anymore, because by his stripes I am healed. So that curse have to leave me. It has no dominion over my life anymore. But if I begin to have an asthma attack, and if I say, something foolish, well, I guess that asthma came back. I am giving those demons power to give me asthma again by my own words. I am condemning myself. When God heals you and you know that you are healed, be careful of what you say. Stop speaking foolishly. Your words matter. Venting, there is no such thing as venting. Venting is demonic. Stop that. If you have a problem, pray to God about it. Don't just speak negative things about people or yourself saying that you are in pain and you are so sick and you are so hurt and you have this and you have that. When you do that, you are allowing demons more entry into your life. When you do that. If demons are attacking your life so much now, why are you going to give them more room? They have that inch, right? But when you are declaring that stuff over your life, you are giving them an inch here, an inch there, a foot there, more and more and more. You can't just say anything that comes to your mind. You can't do that. Your words have power. You have to begin to understand that. So when you say, well, Kevin, I can't fast because, you know, I have diabetes and all this stuff here and I might die if I don't eat or drink anything. Listen, faith, faith. I was going to the emergency room three to six times a year from not going to the hospital at all. How is that possible? God and my faith in God. If I did not use my faith in the right way, believe me, I would still be sick. But I don't have to live under that curse of asthma anymore because I am living by the rules and regulations of the Bible. I pray that this makes sense here. So faith is not based upon what you see, the way that you feel. It is your belief in God. Hey, I am praying to God for him to heal me. I believe that he has healed me, so I am going to declare that I am healed even though I am still sick. That is faith. And you continue to declare it no matter what and not say anything negative about the way that you are feeling. My feelings have nothing to do with faith. The way whether I am ill or not, for instance, 
I believe I was getting sick one day and I went over my parents' home and, you know, my nose was running and I believe I was coughing. Then my dad asked me, are you getting sick? I said, I either said no or I am fine. He said, well, how are you fine when your nose is running? You have your nose plugged with tissues and you are coughing. It looks like you are sick. No, I am fine. Everyone could see that I am sick, but I told him that I am fine. That I am fine. Why? Because I am speaking in faith. Now, he thought that I was crazy for saying that I am fine when I was really sick back then. But I chose to speak in faith and said that I am fine, even though everyone could see that I was sick. That is faith. And within three or four days, everything was fine. He was saying that I may have to go to the hospital and stuff. No, I am fine. Speaking in faith, I am not lying. I am speaking in faith, not lying. I pray that this makes sense. You don't announce the bad things, the illness, or the injury that is happening to you. If you have prayed to God to heal you and you believe that you are healed, you declare your healing every time. Even if people say that, hey, it looks like you are sick or you injured your leg, if you are believing that God has healed your leg, say it. It doesn't matter if they think that you are crazy. Who cares? Many people may think that I am crazy. I don't care. I care about being healed. I care about pleasing God. Now, I don't want any arguments or anything like that. But hey, pleasing God and being healed is on top. I pray that this makes sense. Use your faith. It is not as hard as you think it is. It is different from the way that you are, but hey, you have to change, right? In order to get what you want in God, you have to change. Well, Kevin, I don't want to change because, you know, I'm just this stubborn person. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. God bless you.